I'm Christian Amov. I'm the uh, I'm the country manager of Lego South Africa and uh, Sub-Saharan Africa. Welcome to Plot Place today. I would like to share my story behind Lego, share a few insights around my my job and my position, and uh, uh, and give you some insights into my favorite Lego models. When I look back uh, at Lego, I started with the company uh, almost eight years ago, at the end of 2011. When I look at my, my own personal story, being a German, I think it's for most of the people outside the, con the country would be, would be quite obvious that, I'm, that I grew up with, 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 uh, with the brand and the toys. And I actually didn't. Um, that has to do that I grew up in, uh, in the East part, in the socialist part of, uh, of, the, of split Germany back then in East Germany. And, uh, and I was 12 when, uh, the, the day when, when the Berlin Wall came down, which was actually this weekend, the 9th of November, 1989. So they celebrated, Germany celebrated 30, 30 years of reunification. And, and I remember then uh, it was, I was a bit at the age where you probably don't start over because you I just then turned 13 in December. It was a little bit the time where I felt, I mean, Lego was still, I knew about it, but I, since I had never really grown up with it, I actually have grown up with uh, socialist Eastern European knockoff products, which looked similar, but what not even close to that. So basically, um, I, I started then a lot later with it. I mean, knowing the brand and it was, uh, it was an, an important brand because it was something I could never have. And I, I've always wished to have, and when I was younger, uh, but I wasn't, I wasn't able to get. So um, when I started, my first uh, son was born. It was basically he was four, four months old when when I started with the company, uh, and I lived through basically um, the Duplo phase with him. I remember when we when we got the first uh, fire station, and uh, and and. and Basically, I lived through it again like, like a child. And then the first set I actually bought myself was, uh, was the Campervan. Um, the Volkswagen Campervan, which was, I think, an important model also for the Lego Group at that time in 2012, uh, because uh, it, it basically started off the Creator Expert range of vehicles, which at that time I think nobody ever thought about it, it became a range of models. Uh, we just started it off, and uh, it's actually also one of the few models which is uh, in the assortment for such a long time, because it's, I mean, it's now in the seventh year. I think only Mindstorms or so is similarly long uh, in the assortment. Looking at, I mean, how, how does this, uh, the guy from Germany actually make it to South Africa at one point, you will probably ask yourself. Um, and that has also obviously a little bit to do with my background. I mean, growing up in, in, in East Germany and having, not having the opportunity to travel, apart from a handful of countries in, in, in Eastern Europe, um, which are not, all good and nice, but not, not half as exciting than, than some other places in the world. Um, I actually learned it also from my parents that, that traveling and, and seeing other cultures and understanding other cultures is, is, an, is an important part of who we are. And I started relatively early uh, to make more extensive trips also to Africa um, and uh, so parts of East Africa, parts of Southern Africa, uh, basically backpacking as a student. And I said, if there's the opportunity at one point in my life to actually live there, that would be great, living and working there. Um, and that was then the opportunity by the end of uh, 2016, actually. Um, the previous country manager moved on and this position became vacant. We didn't share it with the kids, but we shared it, uh, shared it with my wife, obviously, we did research. And then I think when this application process came to the end, we were like, oh, if they turn me down now, that would be a, that would be a disappointment because we are, we are already mentally half there. And, um, and then we got the goal, and, and then we moved on. So I see some of some similarities uh, between when I grew up and, 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 and what, what I sometimes see, also see the country in. The country gone through such a transformation and such a change. A little bit like uh, this press conference on the 9th of November 1989, where it showed uh, uh, suddenly that the Berlin Wall is open and we could actually travel. So, um, so I, I feel I can sympathize with a lot of things the country has gone through here as well. Um, obviously being Germany, being far, far away from being an African country and the culture is different. But um, I like that. I like to be in a, in, a, in, a, in a different environment and to say there's so much still to do for Lego. Lego has such a history in the country, history of, of, of many decades, but also history uh, where we were not able to actually give it in the hand of, of more children and more people. 
but only a, a certain group of people had access to the brand and access to the products. And that's obviously uh, fascinating what, what's happening now also with the help of the Lego Foundation. That they are going out there into, into underprivileged areas. Uh, they work with the government, uh, they work with the Minister of Basic Education. And just recently that, uh, that actually the, even the owner family was here. So Thomas Christiansen and Kjell were here, Jörn Wie Knudstorp, um, meeting with the minister, um, looking at the Lego certified stores, um, being here in the office. Um, that was quite fascinating. And also the interest shown from their side is, is great. And there's still, and we ask about how do you see South Africa and how do you see the future? And uh, the UNV also um, replied to us that, that Africa remains important for us and probably will become even more important in the future. Um, as at the moment we are, we are strong and we are very present in South Africa, but uh, there's still a lot to explore um, north from here. Into, into, in the rest of Africa, and that will come definitely in the 2020s. When you look at, at Lego South Africa, obviously we are, uh, with our office here in Rudeport, we are, this is the only office on the African continent. We have basically we are spearheading the development into, into Africa. One of our strategies, obviously going into, into South Africa and Africa, is, is to get the brick in as many kids' hands and, and, and people's hands as possible. And you probably also see that uh, over the last years. Uh, Lego is available in more and more stores. In stores where being far outside typical toy stores, but being grocery stores, being drug stores, being all sorts of different, uh, different places, because we want to decrease the barrier to get access to the brand, because we believe um, it is uh, many more people deserve to, to play with our products or to build with them. Um, and we also strongly believe in learning through play. So um, we actually used to say that, that it's good for the children to play with our products and they can become part of their development. How can we actually make sure that we're bringing the right products into the country? And it means also that, that the higher end and the more collectible products. One thing is to go broader, but one is also to go a bit higher up what we call the, the affinity pyramid. People who are sitting up there and collect the brand, build with the brand, spend a lot of time with the brand, um, and then and invest hard blood uh, into what they do. Um, and they deserve to have something like a Lego certified store. Where, um, and not only one in the country, but in the, in the major cities, where they can actually build, uh, buy loose bricks, they can build their own minifigures, um, but they can also get basically all novelties and all new products uh, which, uh, which, are get, which get globally launched. And, and this is important. And I think that also helped us um, to get even closer with uh, the, the fan community, actually. When I joined in 2017 and I went to the Brick Fair for the first time, that was in October 2017, I was three months in the country. And I was impressed, I mean, by the amounts of tables, the quality of mocks, um, and how many different people, diversity of people actually were interested in the brand and, 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 and spent a lot of time uh, on it and then and, and a lot of creativity. When I fast forward then to, to October 2019, then I will see it's a whole different story. So it's an impressive uh, development I've seen in terms of the interaction of the fans among each other, the quality of mocks, the diversity of mocks, and they're actually now getting a foothold into um, like a shopping mall or a place like, like the Menlin Mall, which also offers us not to be among ourselves in this little exclusive circle of fans who know a lot, lot about it, but also have the stopping power of families who just went there on a, on a Saturday or Sunday morning or afternoon and stopped them with the impressive mocks and what the, what the brand can do. And then having actually the fans standing there and, and introducing them even. And I've been introduced to products by children by adults and by all sorts of people. And then I saw very different in terms of sizes and what they can do and probably the investment of ours. But I think what was all for all in common, they were, they were standing there because they, it was important to them and they wanted to, to spend the time there. Regardless if you have a three, four, five or 10,000 piece mock or you have you just have maybe your, your small Lego City model and you build it or your Lego Ninjago model. The feeling you have around is the same. Um, and that was quite impressive to see. And I actually also saw how many people actually stopped there. Um, how many people took videos and, uh, and, and had big eyes and actually like, wow, what, what is actually this? And, you can, and then you still realize 
how many people in this country with children at that age still don't know what they're actually seeing there. Um, and that's probably the major difference to, to the part of the world where I'm coming from, where even people haven't built for the last 20 years uh, a Lego set, which is saying, like, I mean, look at Lego. And, um, and that's there we see that we are, that we have progressed quite a bit in our journey, but we are on the other end also still at the beginning. And uh, that's the fascinating part of the position here, absolutely. Let me start. It's not a particular, it's not a set, but it's close to my heart. And that's the, that's the so-called DFB minifigures, the Mannschaft, the German soccer team uh, of, of 2016, from the Euro 2016. Um, that's close to my heart, first of all, of course, I'm, I'm, because I'm German. I've been part of the launch of those products. I've been part of the development. I mean, a little bit more the sideline, but a friend of mine who's been the, the PR manager and the trade relations manager for, for Lego in, uh, in, in Central Europe. She has worked in a previous role with the German Football Association, the DFB. And she, when she joined the company, she, that was also the time when Germany had just become the, 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 the world champion in soccer. And she said, look, I mean, why don't you do minifigures? I was like, yeah, it's, we never done that. I mean, Lego doesn't do that. I mean, then next time this will be, I don't know, other sports will come, we will never get that. And she said, let, let me do it. And uh, she brought then the important people together. She brought, uh, because she's far away from product development, but she knew the right people. And she connected uh, with her contacts at the German Football Association. She connected with her contacts at, at the global product development team at Billund. And then we realized we can actually do it. And it's not, uh, it, 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 we need to dare uh, to do it. And then two years later, we actually brought it out. And it's, it's fascinating to see for the first time. And I remember then uh, received all the German employees and received this card and all, all the minifigures as a, as a thank you, basically, and as a, as a gesture for, for the great launch fee. And I think we sold something crazy like two or three million euros of minifigures, which is, which is an incredible amount. And I actually know that I think the biggest portion of uh, of the Lego own stores and Lego.de being the own platform, I think went straight to the UK. Um, and this is probably also I mean, I've seen them here at the Brick Fair. This is probably also where uh, some people here actually got them from. Yes, so that's uh, that's uh, they will always stay close to me. Um, that's a, it's an amazing part of my Lego memory. Yeah, another one of my of my favorite models is uh, is the orange uh, 9, 911 Porsche. Which, um, which for me is uh, is another milestone of, uh, of what, was, what Lego Technic can do. And I remember when we went to Billund, I think it was in June 2015. And this is where we went to our so-called customer preview. This is where we then take, uh, we took all the German wholesalers and retailers and we went to Billund and we knew that there was a big model coming uh, for Lego Technic, but we also hadn't seen it ourselves. And then we approached this desk and uh, the post looked differently at that time. It wasn't an orange one, it was still had this, this camouflage look. Uh, and models usually have, when, uh, or real cars have, when they try to hide them away from journalists and from, from, from getting, taking pictures. And we were like, wow, that's a, that's a whole different story. In terms of the size of the model, um, the, the, being so close to reality, uh, the quality of, uh, of the building instructions, the, the quality of the packaging. And we were like, wow, that's, uh, that's, that's, uh, that's a whole different story compared to what we had ever seen before. Um, and at that time, I think we didn't even dare to think about that this might be the beginning of a, of a whole range of supercars. And we now know it is actually, with, uh, we have seen now last year with the Bugatti. But the Porsche is surely something which marks, which marks a milestone for me. And I remember when I built it, that um, I think the first hours you just building the lower part of the model and don't even realize before it gets a car. So it's also in terms of number of pieces and so on, it's, uh, it's, it's a very special model. So uh, thanks so much for watching. Um, uh, please don't forget to uh, share, like and subscribe. And uh, I hope you, we're going to meet again in the future.